Another year, another birthday. Not just for me though, because this legend, the LG G3, is turning 10. It's pretty crazy to think 2014 was 10 years ago now, but here we are and in that amount of time, many things have changed, but almost nothing has changed quite so much as the phones we carry in our pockets. While LG is unfortunately no longer in the smartphone game, in 2014 they were very much a large part of the quickly growing smartphone landscape. LG was still riding the high of their previously successful G2, and not wanting to waste an opportunity to repeat that success, they announced its successor, the G3, in late May of 2014. Some reviewers criticized the G3 for being too similar to the G2, but I personally think it was a worthwhile upgrade. Yes, it's still plastic, and the technical specifications are similar, but it boasts a bigger, sharper display with smaller bezels, and a slimmer, more attractive design. Instead of the shiny fingerprint magnet plastic on the back of the G2, the G3 came in more colors, and was designed to have a brushed metal look, even though, yes, it is still very much plastic. This phone was all set up to be a massive success, and it didn't disappoint. The G3 sold in record numbers for LG, even reportedly outselling the Samsung Galaxy S5 in some markets. Even here in the US where LG phones were not quite as popular, it did surprisingly well. This was actually my first flagship smartphone I ever owned. Before this, I had used several budget LG devices, but none of them were anywhere near this good. The LG G3 was the first smartphone ever made to use a Quad HD 1440p display, a higher resolution than many phones that even came after the LG G3. Up to that point, the max resolution any smartphone had ever reached was 1080p or just HD, which is still pretty good, but not on this level. This new technology was obviously one of LG's biggest boasting points with the G3, but it gathered a lot of skepticism for multiple reasons, but the most glaring issue being 2014 tech wasn't ready for this crazy resolution. Apps and content made for smartphones at the time were optimized at max for 1080p displays, and many more apps, including YouTube were capped at 720p, effectively half of the G3's display resolution. On top of that, there were battery and performance worries like the infamous overheating issues the G3 became known for, and unfortunately the lack of support for their new smartphone displays led to many people unfairly blaming LG for overhyping the G3's display, while in reality, LG was just innovating too fast for the rest of the world to keep up. This innovation wasn't limited to the front of the phone though. Flipping around, there's more going on back here too. Of course we've got the power volume button on the back, same place as they were on the G2, but above that we've also got a new camera system that LG was pretty proud of. The 13 megapixel sensor is similar to the one on the G2, which was good enough and sufficient for the time, but not really revolutionary. The way autofocus was handled, however, was very different from what any other phone could do. The G3 uses a laser system for autofocus to increase focusing speeds and accuracy. This little laser and sensor array at the left of the camera is where all the magic happens. The phone uses the laser to rapidly fire bursts of light and uses the sensor to detect how long it takes for the light to be reflected off the nearest object. It does all this with such precision and speed that you don't even know it's happening, and it actually works really well. In case you were curious, yes, you can cover it up, and this will cause the camera have to do a little more hunting to grab focus, but the camera is still entirely functional without it, and you know, these fancy lasers don't really do much for overall photo quality, so this could easily be passed off as a gimmick. The camera app is pretty normal, nothing too special here, we've got some shooting modes, the most interesting being magic focus, which shoots multiple photos at different focus points and lets you manually pick focus for the final photo. I can't really think of a real world use for this photo mode, but it is fun. While we're still looking at the back of the phone, I might as well talk about the speaker. Down here at the bottom left, you'll see the small backfiring speaker that LG was brave enough to boast on in their commercials. This is apparently one of the first smartphones ever made to include a built-in 1 watt speaker, which sounds cool, but in real life, I can't say I'm very impressed. It can get loud enough most of the time, sure, but it lacks much character or definition. I remember even back when I used this phone as a daily driver, it never really stood out from anyone else's phone speakers, which was too bad because the G3 has a super unique and, in my opinion, underrated feature simply called Audio Channel Mode. When you enable Audio Channel Mode, the G3 essentially turns itself into a Bluetooth speaker. Now when you connect to the G3 from any Bluetooth device, that device device will see the G3 as a speaker and you can play music and audio to it. I don't know why they had to get rid of this feature and it was genuinely useful and cool even if the G3 speaker wasn't the best of the best. If I remember correctly, they dropped this feature with the Android 6 update, and then it never showed up again on any other devices. The US cellular model I have here never got the Android 6 update, so the audio channel mode is still fully functional here. While the G3 launched running Android 4.4, almost all carrier options soon got the Android 5 update. A long time later, after everyone else had already moved on, 
a select few carriers finally received the Android 6 update, and then future updates for any G3s were discontinued. Speaking of software, LG's Android skin was one of the most highly criticized aspects of the phone. It was a step up from the G2, but you can still see how LG went a little too far just to make this software experience unique. Some of these UI elements just aren't super intuitive, and there are more pre-installed apps than I'd like to see. VoiceMate, for example, was LG's personal assistant to compete with Siri and the Google Assistant, but obviously since the LG G3 is running Android, it's got the Google Assistant built in, so the inclusion of their own voice assistant is really unnecessary. I'd love to talk more about VoiceMate and even put it up against its competitors, but unfortunately it no longer works. Of course, the software here is not all bad. I'd actually say the good stuff outweighs the overly enthusiastic skin. This phone packs some pretty cool unique features you won't find anywhere else. There's the aforementioned audio channel mode, but also just as cool if not more, let me introduce you to Quick Remote. This feature was not limited to the G3, nor was the G3 the first to do it, but it's cool enough for me to say this app is a flagship feature for the G3. If you haven't already guessed, Quick Remote uses the G3's built-in IR blaster and turns your phone into a remote control for just about anything that could use one. Not only is it useful in case you lose your remote, it's just more convenient, and of course makes for a great party trick and might even get you in trouble. This app has it all. You can let it make its own remote by just telling it the brand of your appliance, but you can also build your own remote control and train it to understand anything that uses an IR blaster. I remember actually finding this feature genuinely useful. Another app that's not necessarily unique to the G3 is Quick Memo Plus. This is an evolution from the Memo and Notebook apps on older LG phones, and yes, this is just a note-taking app, but hear me out. Quick Memo Plus lets you turn anything into a note, add anything to a note, categorize your notes, sync notes to the cloud, and more. None of that is really unique to this app, you can download all kinds of free apps that offer similar functionality, but having this powerful of a note-taking app included with the phone is extremely convenient. This app was so good that it continued evolving and survived all the way to the LG Wing, LG's last phone before the death of their mobile division. Multitasking is also something the G3 handles quite well. Dual window mode lets you use two apps at the same time by dividing them into two resizable windows. This only works with a few apps, but it's still a pretty cool feature. There's also a feature called QSlide that lets you open a small selection of LG apps in a floating window that overlays whatever app is currently running and can be moved around and resized similarly to how a computer works. At the time, the G3's Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor was plenty powerful, and with 3GB of RAM on the top spec models, it's fully capable of taking on multitasking and really anything you could throw at it. The G3 was packed with so many features it just couldn't be ignored. Yes, its lightweight plastic design drew some criticism, and there were some concerning issues like boot looping, overheating, and brick devices, but from the sharpest display on any phone ever to a laser autofocusing camera and some of the coolest software tricks out there, it's no wonder these things sold as well as they did. The G3 was so successful in fact that LG later re-released some more budget-friendly models that more or less stole the G3 name, but cut down on many of the G3's flagship features. One of these devices, the G3 Stylus, got a whole video of its own on my channel. Speaking of my other videos, I am currently working on making a video about the LG G series of phones, and as a lifelong LG fan, I'm super excited for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and drop a comment as well. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.